Hi there, Bernard and I are here with some bedtime stories just for you. So let's get started. Our first book is called One Duck Stuck. It's written by Phyllis Root with illustrations by Jane Chapman. And this is published by Candlewick Press. So I'm gonna get in frame here so you can see all the pictures. This is kind of a counting book, but it's also a good story. Down by the marsh, by the sleepy, slimy marsh, one duck gets stuck in the muck down by the deep green marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Two fish, tails going swish, swim to the duck splash splash. But no luck, the duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the squishy fishy marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Three moose munching on spruce plod to the duck clomp clomp. But no luck, the duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the swampy chompy marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Four crickets chirping in the thickets. Leap to the duck, pleep, pleep. But no luck, the duck stays stuck. Deep in the muck, down by the pricky sticky marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Five frogs hopping on logs jump to the duck, plip, plop. But no luck, the duck stays stuck deep in the muck, down by the creaky, croaky marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Six skunks climbing over trunks crawl to the duck, plunk, plunk. But no luck, the duck stays stuck, deep in the muck, down by the soggy, loggy marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can. We can. Seven snails making slippery trails slide to the duck, sloosh, sloosh. But no luck, the duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the slippy, sloppy marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Eight possums nibbling on blossoms crawl to the duck, slosh, slosh. No luck, the duck stays stuck, deep in the muck, down by the reedy weedy marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Nine snakes, leaving little wakes, slither to the duck, slink, slink. No luck, the duck stays stuck, deep in the muck, down by the messy mossy marsh. Help, help. Who can help? We can, we can. 10 dragonflies zooming through the skies, whirr to the duck, zing, zing. But no luck, the duck stays stuck, deep in the muck, down by the muggy, buggy marsh. Help, help, who can help? We can, we can. Splish, chomp, pleep, plop, plunk, sloosh, slosh, slink, zing. They all help the duck who got stuck in the muck. Spluck! Thanks, said the duck who got out of the muck down by the deep green marsh. And off she goes. Well, let's do a finger play about some ducks. Can you put up your five fingers and we'll pretend each one is a duck? And with your other hand, can you make a big mama duck with her mouth going quack, quack? Five little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. The mama duck said, quack, 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 but only four 
little ducks came back. Four little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 but only three little ducks came back. Three little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 but only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 but only one little duck came back. One little duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said quack, 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 but none of the five little ducks came back. So sad Mother Duck went out that day over the hills and far away. Mama Duck said quack, 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 quack. And all of the five little ducks came back and they were so happy to see their mama. They kissed her. And their mama kissed them back. Our next book is called Little Red Hot. It might sound a little bit like a story you know. This is written by Eric Kimmel and illustrated by Laura Feliska Beith. And it's published by Amazon Children's Publishing. Now, once upon a time, there was a little bitty Texas gal called Little Red Hot. And folks called her that because she loved to eat red hot chili peppers. She ate peppers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And she ate pepper ice cream for dessert. She had hot pepper cake for her birthday with jalapenos on top instead of candles. Now folks used to say that Little Red Hot could eat fire out of a stove. But Little Red Hot would answer, no, I wouldn't do that. Fire ain't hot enough for me. Now one day, Little Red Hot's mama said to her, Oh, Little Red Hot, I heard from Grandma today and she's feeling poorly. I think she has a cold. Could you drop by and look in on her? She'd feel so much better to see you. I'll do that, Mama, Little Red Hot said. I'll bake a hot pepper pie, oh, Grandma's favorite. It'll knock those cold germs right out of her. Now Little Red got busy in the kitchen, and in no time at all, she had mixed up a hot pepper pie. She used Louisiana hot sauce instead of milk and filled the crust with eggs, cheese, and the hottest chili peppers she could find. Jalapeno peppers that could make a grown man weep. And Tabasco peppers that could knock over a longhorn. And habanero peppers that could take the paint right off the wall and Naga Yolakias from India, oh, one of the hottest peppers in the world. Each one came with a warning label. Little Red Hot put the pie in the oven to bake and she didn't have to even turn the oven on. That pie was so hot, it baked itself. Little Red Hot got on her pony and set off for Grandma's house. Along the way, she met up with Pecos Bill and his cowboys. Hey, Little Red Hot, where are you going? They called to her. I'm taking a hot pepper pie to Grandma. She has a cold, Little Red Hot said. Oh, now you be careful on your way to Grandma's house, said Pecos Bill. We just talked to three little tamales, and they say that Senor Lobo, the big bad wolf, is prowling around the neighborhood. You keep an eye out for him. I'll do that, Pecos Bill, Little Red Hot promised. Well, no sooner had Pecos Bill and the cowboys ridden out of sight when Little Red Hot saw a big gray animal loping toward her. Hold it right there. Don't you come any closer, Little Red Hot yelled. I know who you are. You're Senior Lobo. Pecos Bill warned me about you. Well, the big gray animal stopped running. Oh, you got it all wrong, miss, he said. I'm not Senior Lobo, I'm Senior Coyote. I may be tricky, but I wouldn't hurt a fly. 
you're mighty big for a coyote, Little Red said. And you're mighty smart, little girl, and pretty too. Where are you going, he asked her. I'm going to visit my grandma. She's feeling poorly, Little Red Hot said. Oh, what a good little girl you are. Why, you tell your grandma I hope she feels better. And off he went. Now, of course, the big gray animal wasn't Senior Coyote at all. It was Senior Lobo, and Little Red Hot had no business talking to him. But it was too late to do anything about that now. And even worse, oh, Senior Lobo knew a shortcut that took him boom, 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 right straight to Grandma's house. He stepped up to the front door and he knocked. Little Red, is that you? Grandma called. Senior Lobo made his voice sound like Little Red Hot's. Yes, Granny, I heard you were sick. I hope you're feeling better. Oh, I feel better already now that you're here. Come on in. Senior Lobo did just that. Why, Grandma let out a yelp when she saw him, and Grandma was sick, but she wasn't slow. I'll catch her later, Senior Lobo said. Then he rummaged through Grandma's clothes until he found a spare nightcap and nightgown. He put them on and hopped into bed just as Little Red Hot arrived. Howdy, Grandma. It's Little Red Hot. I'm sorry you don't feel good. Why is your front door open? Oh, to let the breeze in, darling, to let the breeze in, Senior Lobo said. Well, I brought you a surprise, Grandma, Little Red Hot said, and she went into the kitchen. She cut a big wedge out of the hot pepper pie and put it on a plate, and she carried it to Grandma's bedroom. Senior Lobo lay in the bed with the covers pulled right up to his nose. Little Red Hot looked at him real hard. Grandma, what big eyes you have, she said. Oh, the better to see you with, darling, Senior Lobo said. Grandma, what big ears you got. Oh, the better to hear you with, darling, Senior Lobo said. Grandma, what big teeth you got. Now, don't you say another word, because I know what they're for, said Little Red Hot. What are they for, darling? Senior Lobo asked. They're for eating this hot pepper pie. I made it just for you. And Little Red Hot shoved that wedge of pie right into Senior Lobo's mouth. And to say he yelled, oh, wouldn't do him justice. He hollered so loud, space aliens could have heard him over in the next galaxy. He didn't go out the front or the back. No, he shot straight up like a rocket, right through the ceiling of Grandma's bedroom, trailing fire and smoke as he went. And that's when Pecos Bill and the Cowboys arrived. Grandma told us Senior Lobo came by. Where is he? Little Red pointed up at the hole in the ceiling. He went that away. I don't suppose he'll be back. Would you all like to stay for supper? I've got hot pepper pie for everyone. Oh, no thanks, Little Red Hot, Pecos Bill said, and the cowboys agreed. We're brave all right, but not that brave. So Little Red Hot and her grandma, they ate that hot pepper pie all by themselves. Every last crumb. And guess what? It knocked those cold germs out flat. And you know, that was just what Little Red had promised. Little Red Hot, that is. Well, should we do some cooking? And we're gonna cook something real hot. We're gonna cook our hot dogs. I've got my five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went damn. 
So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, Little Red took a pie to her grandma and our next story, we're gonna have a cake, but there's a little bit of a twist at the end. Hope you're okay with it. This is called Oh Look, a Cake by J.C. McKee. He did the illustrations too, and it's published by Clarion Books, a division of Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. And in this story are some animals, a couple of animals you might not be familiar with. Maybe if we go back here, you can see them better. Over here, we have a sloth. And over here, a lemur. And this in the middle, well, that's no critter. That's the cake. Oh, oh, look, said Sloth. A cake. We should have a party. Well, who would you invite? Lemur asked. How about Elephant? Don't be silly. He'd eat the whole cake. Tiger? No. She'd eat the whole thing too. And then you, and then me. Peacock maybe? Forget it. That guy won't eat anything prettier than he is. What about ant? That's just asking for trouble. Well, why? Well, if you invite one ant, You've got to invite them all. And have you ever tried cutting a cake into that many pieces? Porcupine? Only if you like your cake extra spiky. Ooh, can you see those? How about Unicorn? He's so cool. Wait, what? That's just a horse in disguise and anyway, He's busy today. Well, there's always Dolphin. <laughs> that show off would do everything but eat the cake. Oh, and there's one other thing. There's no water around here. Exactly. Rhino, mm, she's trouble. Tortoise, sugar does things to him. Chameleon? Haven't seen her in weeks. And Python? Oh, terrible table manners. But wait, that means there's no one left to, ex to eat this cake except... Wow. My cake. You ate my beautiful cake that I made for my birthday. Oh, we're sorry, Tiger. Oh, don't worry. I can still get it back. There are the ants. They're saying, oh, so moist. I must get the recipe because all that was left was crumbs. Well, you've been sitting for a while, so I have a feeling it's time to shake your sillies out. All right. 
Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap. Clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out? Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? Because it's time to jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump. Jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And I hope you've got them all out because we've got a brand new book from the library. This is called The Moose Fairy. It's written and illustrated by Steve Smallman and it's published by, I love this, Happy Yak. Now Moose was walking through the forest one day when he saw a giant poster. May I read it to you? It said Secret Fairy Club. New members wanted. Meeting today, 11 o'clock at the Old Oak Tree. Bring your own costume. Free fairy cakes. All welcome. P.S. Top Secret. Moose couldn't believe his luck. He'd always wanted to be a fairy. I must find something to wear, he thought, and he ran off to get ready. Now back home, Moose looked through his dress-up box and tried on some outfits. Could this work? No. A clown fairy? No. This hat? Mm-mm. Aha, my wand and crown. Ta-da! This is the one. Moose felt fabulous in his fairy costume, but when he arrived at the old oak tree, he couldn't help but notice that everyone else was, well, little. What are you doing here? asked Mouse rudely. I've come to join the secret fairy club, replied Moose in a loud whisper. Shh, said the others, it's a secret. But the poster said, all welcome, replied Moose, confused. Oh, you are welcome, Moose, said Miss Twinkle, the head fairy. Now, time for the tests, everyone. There was a twirling test, a wand waving test, and a making glitter pictures test. Oh, Moose loved them all. Then they had to say the fairy oath. Do you see they all raised their hands or their hooves? Fairies are kind to all creatures. Fairies are not mean or bitter. Fairies help other in troubles or need and make pretty pictures with glitter. Well done, everyone, said Miss Twinkle. You've all passed. Moose was so excited. Next, Miss Twinkle taught them the secret knock to open the clubhouse door. Why don't you try it first, Moose, she said. Knock. Knock, knockity knock, 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 knock. And as if by magic, the secret door opened. But it was so tiny. Everybody else ran laughing into the clubhouse, but poor Moose was left outside. That rude little mouse stuck her head out of a window. You can't be in our club, she said. You just don't fit in. Feeling miserable, Moose walked away. 
Taking a bath, Moose? asked Fox as he watched from the riverbank. No, sighed Moose. I'm trying to shrink so I can get into the secret fairy club and eat fairy cakes with all the little creatures. Fox thought of all those little creatures stuffed with fairy cakes. Mmm, sounds delicious, he grinned. I think I'd like to join too. Well, it's in the old oak tree, said Moose miserably. Oh, that was a secret, wasn't it? The secret knock goes knock, knock, knockity, knock, 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 knock. But don't tell anyone. It's a secret. But Fox had already gone. Back in the old oak tree, Miss Twinkle looked around. Where's Moose? she asked. The fairies looked out at each other rather sheepishly. He's gone, wailed Beaver. We were so mean to poor Moose just because he's different, said Squirrel. He was wonderful at glitter pictures, said Mouse quietly. Well, just then, knock, knock, knockity, knock, 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 knock. Moose, they cheered. You're just in time for... Dinner, growled Fox, squeezing through the door. <gasps> Meanwhile, Moose, dripping with water, approached the old oak tree. Maybe I've shrunk by now, he thought. But suddenly, Mouse heard a cry. Help! <gasps> he rushed to the tree, but he couldn't get inside. You can't help, came Fox's voice from the tree, because you just don't fit in. Yes, I do, cried Moose, charging at the tree. Crash! Smash! Fox was so scared that he ran out of the tree and disappeared into the forest. The fairies were shaken and scared, but not hurt. Oh, thank you, Moose, they said. You saved us, e even though we were mean to you, cried Mouse. Of course, said Moose. I took the fairy oath. Fairies are kind to all creatures. Fairies are not mean or bitter. Fairies help others in trouble or need. And they all together said, and make pretty pictures with glitter. We were just about to make some glitter pictures. Will you join us? Asked Miss Twinkle. But you said I don't fit in, said Moose sadly. We were wrong, cried the fairies. You are the best fairy of all. That's right, said Miss Twinkle. In fact, you don't just fit in. You belong. And for the first time in a very long time, Moose felt that he really did. I think he's gonna like being a fairy, don't you? Well, I'm pretty sure if Moose was here, he'd wave his magic wand and he'd make sure that everybody has a piece of pretend bubble gum because it's time. So reach in your pocket and I'm sure you'll find, whether it's in a real pocket or a pretend pocket, a piece of pretend bubble gum. Unwrap it, throw the wrapper in the trash, and then pop that gum in your mouth. Chew it up until it's all soft and squishy and then we'll do something disgusting with it, right? Here we go. Okay, put your hand out. One, two, three. Oh. And clap your hands together. And now your hands are stuck with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your shoulder. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. 
Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. Well, let's get ready for our flannel board story. And I'm hoping all of the pieces will fit on here today. I'm gonna to make sure that I've got the whole board in frame here because there's gonna be a lot of things going up here. Well, Let's put him way up at the top here. Do you know what that is? You recognize it? Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippo snorting in my ear. Hippo, hippo, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. Let's get him going this way. Flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra braying in my ear. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a boa constrictor hissing in my ear. Boa constrictor, boa constrictor, what do you hear? I hear an elephant trumpeting in my ear. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a leopard snarling in my ear. Leopard, leopard, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. Peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a, hmm. Let's move him back a little bit, a little bit more. Because I don't think he wants the wall that's so close to him. Told you it was going to be a tight fit. I hear a walrus bellowing in my ear. Walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear hmm, a zookeeper whistling in my ear. Zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear? I hear a polar bear, a lion, a hippo, a flamingo, a zebra, a boa constrictor, an elephant, a leopard, a peacock, and a walrus. That's what I hear, and so will you, if you ever come to visit us all at the zoo. Should we count and see how many animals he has to take care of there? You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten animals. It's a lot of work. Well, should we finish up with our Sandra Boynton book? And tonight we're going to have Dino Snores. This is published by Workman. Now, when the sun has gone down and the blue stars appear, then the dinosaurs know that their bedtime is near. So they all clean their teeth and their sweet faces too. Then they wriggle, can you wriggle? And stretch, 
just like dinosaurs do. Their pajamas are cozy. They all put them on. Then they yawn and they yawn and they yawn and they yawn. Now they all settle down in a dinosaur heap and they all close their eyes and they all fall asleep. And soon they are dreaming, our dinosaur friends. I'm afraid this is when all the snoring begins. Honk, shoo, honk, shoo, honk. Shoo, honk, shoo. Were you doing that along with me? Because that's how loud it would be with the dinosaurs. The snoring goes on and on and on through the night. They never stop snoring till the first morning light. I like all the dinos, but I just want to say, thank goodness those dino snores live far, far away. Well, those are our stories for tonight. I think Bernard has already gone to bed, so it's just going to be me saying good night. We'll see you next week for some more bedtime stories here at Wood Library.